Wednesday. So it, I hope you're not confused and think it's Tuesday because it's not. It's Wednesday. <laughs> but um, the sound was off for a moment. Apologise on my behalf. Oh, ah, damn, the tech guy. <laughs> hey everyone, how you going? Welcome to episode ten, not number seven. No, or number eight. <laughs> <laughs> and Ten, isn't it nine? Oh, Neil, you got no hope. We, um, I tell you what, I was, I was going to say how disappointed I was for not being able to bag Neil about his tech expertise uh, because the last show went off perfect. without a hitch, right? And <laughs> and I was going to say to him, we we can't bag Neil for making any uh, mistakes, and, oh, no, and he can. forgot to turn the mic on. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's not programmed into the automation. <laughs> it's in the other one, not this one. Uh, oh. so, so, yeah, guys, um, welcome to episode 10. We've shifted it to Wednesdays um, to make life easier for our tech man. Yes. Um, and we're, we're in the yeah. term of business world now. We're blocking. Oh, we're blocking, are Yes, we? we're blocking because we'll do all videoing on the one day. <laughs> oh, is that what it is? Oh, it's blocking. <laughs> I've heard of blogging, but not blocking. No blocking. Uh, and um, if if you're confused like I am, um, and you go back through Facebook and you see there's about three or four episode sevens. Um, and Again, that, that's our tech man. Well, it's not actually it's, Neil's fault. It's a social it's, media it's, department needs it's, to correct. Yeah, the um, some of, <laughs> some of the Facebook um, inter interactions uh, ca well, can Sebastian be a bit of a problem. Well, uh, Sebastian recommends we need a better tech guy. Seb, do you know anyone we could <laughs> do, possibly line up? Maybe. I yeah, I don't know. I don't really know a very good sound tech man. Yeah, no, but I don't no. Know. We might maybe we might let Seb have a bit of a go one yeah. day. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. No worries. <laughs> Um, hope you've got your cuppa. Um, shout out to Joe Dimitro. Normally she's always got her cuppa ready to go. Um, what's the name now? What you've got to do is you. I want you to count how many ums I do throughout One. the show. <laughs> uh, you probably will lose count because I do too many ums and I, I am trying to improve my ums. Three. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see how we go. Um, Four. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Uh, so I, what he was wanting to I, say, you were going to roll on to another shout exactly. out. Exactly. I'm not going to do ums. <laughs> A big shout out to um, Tim Coleman. Our our thoughts are with you and your family, and uh, we wish you a speedy recovery as soon as you can, mate. Hang in there. We're all, all thinking about you. Everyone in Australia, throughout the trials and enduro scene, um, the, our thoughts are all with you guys and the family and, and um, looking forward to some good results. So all the Definitely. best. Yeah. We, um, we've had some fantastic... We've had the Summer Series 2. We've had, what, about three or four trials under our belt yep. so far? Yes. Um, Summer Series 2 is fantastic to see a lot of new old faces. Um, back again, um, Michael Keel. I I didn't even see you at the trial at all. We must have just been circulating um, directly opposite each other. But I see you in the results. So great to see Michael mm, that's back. That's good having back. Um, Josh Austin. He um, gets to as many trials as he can. But I think that was his first ride that I've seen him at. He might have been at the AJ one that I missed. But um, that's great. Sean Hartfield. Um, another old face. Uh, the Griffos. Yeah, um, they're really old. Great. <laughs> I was going to say, you're going to make Sean Hartfield sound like he's really old. <laughs> Not compared to Griffo. No, no. <laughs> uh, but uh, we're going to have to call them the uh, Griffo Biffos because they had some pretty good looking machines there. The the old guys, um, one on a twin shock, which was Jake's Honda guy. That was really tidy. And of course, um, Tony's got a, a TY Mono, and that is in just smick condition, So, which doesn't surprise me with the Griffos. Um, Andy Chalkley, great to see Andy back having yeah, a go. Yeah, no, it was good. He and bumped into us a couple of times on the on the loop there on his what was he on? silent bike. His silent bike? I don't know. Was I couldn't... his bike stolen, remember? Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, Andy... Well, it was so silent, I didn't know what bike it was. Yeah, well, it's Mark Austin's EM, nice. Electric Motion, and... Uh, it, in actual fact, I mean, Andy's a bit of a tech guru, and that e-motion bike is perfect for Andy because he can be sitting there with his bike ready to go, 
and he can talk and there's no noise. <laughs> so he can talk to people, which Andy loves. That's why he comes really? to trial. He doesn't come to ride trials. Would never have sprung on me that and Andy likes to talk. Oh, no. yeah, he, he, no. yeah. He, he seemed does. kind of like the quiet guy. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. No, he does. It strikes me as he likes to have a bit of a chat. <laughs> <laughs> so great to see Andy around. Um, Holly Wilson too. Um, she does a lot of swimming, so that's a summer sport. And yep. uh, so great to see her back on on the bike. Awesome stuff. And um, and Tamsin had a win in black plate. Oh, nice! Well done. Yeah, awesome ride. Awesome ride. And and a big field of black plate too. Yes, it was and huge. You were in that mix, weren't you? I was. I was. I'm still. I think my arms are recovering. From that, it's either that or lugging all my foliage this morning, one or the other. But oh man, my arms are dying. So uh, awesome, and of course, uh, Karen Douglas in there as well, uh, and yes. uh, and Paul, and Paul, and I did notice on the score sheet that Paul was below uh, Karen. I know, I, I know. Karen, I, Karen was on fire that day. <laughs> is that uh, that's nothing to do with her birthday, is it? Oh, I don't know. Well, maybe, maybe maybe it's what happens when you turn fifty. You just like 50? just like. Become amazing. <laughs> An amazing trials rider. I was almost going to have to do a Tonya Harding on her because I was like, Jesus Christ, woman, put your feet down. <laughs> uh, awesome. Happy birthday to you, Karen. Certainly, um, I, I no way or I believed you were, were that age. And I'm, not, and I'm not allowed to mention a woman's age. So that's just against the rules. But you better also wish Paul a happy birthday because right. it's his birthday today. Oh, is it? Yeah, and he's 50 as well, because you're only as old as the woman you feel. <laughs> so he's having, like, his 50th celebration all over again. Ah, so I think you just give Karen's birth date uh, age I, d- I did, because if you listened earlier, I did say she was 50. Ah, did you? Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> ah, awesome. Um, an, um. Another um. <laughs> well, that must take him up to about eight, nine. What have we got in store for the show today, Jess? What have we got in store? Well, you're going to be talking about the fork thingamajiggities. The thingamajiggities? Yeah, the, the things at the front of the bike that go up and down. Okay. That yeah. stuff. Um, yeah. Then we'll be doing, and, and it has to do with the oils, right? Yes, that's Forks correct. Forks and the oils. Yep. I do apologise because I am in a bit of a, um, I've got a wedding you, this week as well. you got another wedding. So, yes, we'll I am. We'll have to do something about these weddings. Oh, don't worry. This is the, <laughs> this uh, officially announced, this is the last wedding i can't <laughs> cope with the stress anymore so my husband has it <laughs> recorded for the rest of his life all oh, right well it is recorded i'll believe it when i see it because i know how much you love doing flowers well unless someone stuff. comes with a, a a wedding that i just really need to work on but at this stage yeah no more no worries yeah. um but no so, so we've got the forks fork with the thing, oils thing, 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 yep the fork thing with jiggities with the oil yep yeah. Um, and then you're going to be doing a bit of a recap on the bikes that are coming in because we've got a yep. few that have bit now. Of news. Yeah, a bit of news. Yep. Is it landed when they're shipped? Yeah. Is it no yep. docked. docked? Docked. 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 Yeah. The, the the bikes have docked and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, got a bit of news about the Mats. nationals. Yep, the nationals. Um, and then um, I think we'll be introducing everyone to their new MD trailer. Yeah. Yep. That's right. We'll do that and uh, go from there. So. So what I thought we would cover is, and I've had a number of people, and, and I've explained to a number of people about the setting their fork oil levels. And people often say to me, how much oil do I put in the forks? And, and I, they can't find any quantities on the workshop manuals and things like that. So the important thing is, it's not how much oil you put in the forks, it's the air gap that you must have the correct air gap mm. right so that's that's what we're going to explain uh, about that now that the air gap now on trolls bikes um whilst it might seem a bit strange on trolls bikes they 90 percent of them uh, this that's the current model modern yeah. type bikes will only have one spring in the front leg the on the left leg and then on the right leg is your dampening leg so so you so that one gets a chill yeah, it gets you chill. <laughs> they actually that one's the one that does most of the work, the one on the right. So the the air gap on the two forks will be different size. So yep. it's important to make sure you don't mix them up and all that. So in the manual, does it say what yes. air quantity it needs? Yes, it does. Okay. Yeah. So this is the thing. So I wanted to just to cover that and um, explain to people the differences and and why and everything like that. So we, um, I think maybe first off we kick off. Do you want to kick off with that? Um, exploded view, Neil, the cross section. Cross section, and that yes. that'll we'll talk to that, and then um, 
and then I'll show you physically how we get the oil at the right level to give you the correct air gap. So mm -hmm. if you have a look on the screen there, you'll see this is a, a cross section of a fork leg with a spring in it. This one here. Now, so the green lines <clears throat> going on the diagonal, that would be your spring? Yeah. So those those rounded angled type of things. Yep, those uh, stupid whackers. Is your spring. The the yellow section, the bottom lower section, is is your oil. Mm -hmm. So that's your oil sitting in your fork. And then above the oil is your air gap. Now that that is the important thing, is is that air gap. You must have that air gap set right. So that's yep. what I wanted to try and explain to people. Now with when you set your air gap the, you must have the fork leg com completely compressed. Yeah. So, for example, I've got one here. Here, we have produced one earlier. Yeah, here's one I'm, I made earlier. Um, so, that's your fork leg fully extended. Ah, oh, that's the right? thingamajiggity. That's the thingamajiggity. So, when you're setting your fork oil air gap level, you must have your fork leg fully compressed. Now, this one here is your dampening leg. It doesn't have a, have a spring in it. If... If you've got the spring one, to compress your spring one, you have to um, you have to allow the spring to pop out the top. So I'll just pop that out. Yeah, we'll have a couple of spaces. See, so when we fully compress your leg, your spring's going to pop out the top. But you must have the, the spring, spring in there in it because the spring takes up volume. If you if you um, have the spring out, fill it up with oil, and set your air gap, and then put your spring back in, the oil rise. level's going to come up, and you're going to reduce your air gap. So, so so that's the the difference there. Now, do you want me to hold that? If you want to, if you want to hang on to that, okay. So that's heavy. now, this this particular fork is is a paoli. Um, oh, hang on. Oh, yeah, just, no, e I'll either go. way, that side's fine. Yeah. Um, you see, we've got our fancy Nancy mic there. Yeah. So I'm just trying there. to get it so it's not in the way of everything. <laughs> and um, so, but if you this one here is a Paoli, your tech forks are very similar to these, um, and and also your Mazokis, but your Mazokis are a little bit different. So, so basically, the master plan is is to fill fill your fork leg up with X amount of oil, and you roughly gauge it. So with the paolis, you're on your spring leg, you have an air gap of 120 mil. Right? So you can dub, double check that on your manual, but they it's 120 for your spring leg, and it's 60 mil for your dampening leg. So obviously when you're topping it up with oil, you've got to lift it up a bit like that, pop your oil in, and then bring it back down. And all the oil will dribble out here a little bit as you're going. Thank God now, we haven't done that earlier. Now, people go, oh, yeah, I've got to put some oil in there, and then I'll put too much oil in, then I've got to take some oil out. Well, the trick is to use a syringe. That's the easiest way to do it. So you top your oil up to roughly what you think is about right. And there's a couple of ways you can, you can get the right oil level. Now, I've got a couple of little devices. You have a syringe. And, and where do you get those syringes from? Uh, like you, you anywhere? Can, yeah, you can buy them at um, auto shops. Okay. You, know. you don't go to your pharmacy and ask for the biggest syringe? <laughs> <laughs> no, we talked about that before. <laughs> I'm, I'm just double checking. Yeah, this, this is what they would call a 50, 50, 50 mil syringe. Um, but for oil sampling, <coughs> so if you're buying a syringe, buy one for oil sampling because your rubber... It won't swell with the, uh, with yep, the yep, oil, yep. so make make sure you do that. Okay, you might yeah. need to speed it up a bit there, buddy, because my arms actually aren't vice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is a heavy bargain. So, so the trick the trick is, um, if you you can just use a syringe and a, and a small tube, um, you might notice. You, you, yeah, it look looks like you could notice on there. I've got um, markers. permanent marker lines on there. So the bottom one is sixty mil, and this one's one hundred and twenty mil. So if I'm doing my fork fork leg with the spring in it, you just pop that in down through the center and uh, keep an eye on my line until I get down to my 120 mil, down to there, and so then you've, you... you're, you've marked 100, um, 120 mil off the bottom of the tube, and that's at the... 
sitting yeah. at the top of the spring or the... Yeah, no, so the, the 120 mil, Neil raises a good point. The 120 mil is measured from the top of the fork leg down. So I've, the tube I've got marked here, so the tube will come down and will be 120 mil down in here. So then when I pull the syringe, it'll suck any excess oil out. So you just keep pulling and pulling until you're starting to suck air. Then you know that you've got a 120 mil air gap. Oh. It's, it's as simple as doing it that. That's the simple way of doing it. Uh, I would have filled it up and then worked out how many mils is in the fork, well, fully loaded, if, and then removed that 120 mil. And, yeah. But that sounds easier. Now you can, now you can get fancy Nancy. And, and we've got these little devices here, which makes life a lot easier. So again, you put your 120 mil permanent marker line on there. You you put that in. Bring that, bring the tube down till it hits the 120 mark sitting here. You can just tighten that up, and then that just sits there like that. Oh. And you know it's sitting in there. Then you put it in there and you you suck the oil out until it starts sucking air. And then you know you've got your air gap at 120. So Perfect. So that's the way to do that. So that's the little device. Now we do the same with the other leg. We'll we'll show you that. But we use, obviously we use 60 mil leg. Now Neil might pop it. Oh, actually, before we go off the spring leg... What I will talk about, you, yeah, you want to hang on to it, did you? <laughs> well, no, I'll hang on to it just so right. you've got, um, we'll note back this way. Yeah. So on on your spring leg, of course, you know you can you can put what they talk about preload on your spring. So you notice that this had some spaces in here. So as I pulled it out, you pop a spacer in, pop another spacer in, then you pop your, your top cap on like so. Now, whoops, there we go. Where did he go? He's right behind the fork on the, next to the milk Over crate. Over here. Ah. Oh, that's where my milk crate went. Yeah, we're hiding your milk crate. So, now you don't need to hang on to that. Oh, Just that's all right. Pop that over there. So, these are the spaces that are in the, in the paoli one. That, now, that, that orange one isn't. No, no, and this is what I wanted to point out to you. Now, this orange one is, is not standard. Really, I would have called it a bit of PVC piping. <laughs> exactly, you're onto it. So there, there is a standard one, not necessarily out of this leg. I just grabbed one to show you. Now that would be generally what you would have in a standard um, fork. It might be slightly different size, um, depending on the type of fork leg it is. But now this adds your preload on. Now on your cap, you'll notice there's a screw in the center for an Allen key. You just put your Allen key in there. And then as you screw that down, it screws down and puts pressure on your spring and adds what we call preload. Now, the, the thing with trials bites, they're generally set for about an 80 kilo person. Mm -hmm. That's pretty well standard, okay? We, us skinny prices, unfortunately, have always had a problem is, is that we're flea weights. I'm about 63 kilos, Neil's probably 70, something like that. 68. 68, he reckons. There you go. Um, and, um, and of course, you can buy heavier springs. You can generally buy at least two or even three stages of heavier springs, but you can't buy lighter springs. So we actually have to have our springs made for us. So, um, and we do have springs in stock um, for, the, um, for the beaters, and we're currently getting some made now for the gases to, to suit the gases. But... If you're if you want to adjust your preload and your and your weight's not quite there or whatever, a simple way of 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 adding or retracting your preload is by changing your size of your spacer. Now and basically simply all you need to do is go get some electrical tube, <laughs> as just pointed out, a bit of conduit. This one's this one's thirty two mil conduit, fits in nicely on the paolis. Um, and then you can just cut one to suit the length that you want. You know, so. so it's important that you measure it out because you don't want to go too short. You don't want to go too short. You've got to have pre. You've got to have some preload on the spring, so don't go too short. 
But the other important thing, and we won't get into all this detail, otherwise we'll be here forever once Neil gets going, but the most important thing about suspension front and rear is to have the correct rated spring for your weight. So that is important. And then, then you start going into dampening and all, and all that sort of stuff. So just sort of point those sorts of things out to you. So I'm guessing we're never going to do an episode on, on that? No, because otherwise Shh. Neil will be there forever. <laughs> Me? Oh, everyone, there's plenty of, plenty of discussion left, right and centre. Right? <laughs> no, nah, there is. I mean, suspension is everything in, in any motorcycle sport. Um, and, and, of course, that Trolls is certainly no exception to that. Now, what we've got here is actually your dampening leg. Um, and so your oil level is different on your dampening leg. It's always less because you haven't got a spring taking up your excess volume in there, right? But um, I'll get Neil to take a picture up. Now, the way to do it is you've got this locking nut here. Um, so you need to take this end cap off. So you, you just crack your locking nut here, and then you'll be able to screw your end cap off the top, like such. There you go. And then when you go to do your air gap, You've got to make sure your dampening centre rod is bottom out all the way down, okay? Then then you pop your, your tube in with your 60mm line for this particular fork leg to there. Get your syringe on to it, suck out the excess oil until you're sucking air. Then you know you've got your 60mm gap. Same again, it's a lot easier to use your Duvalaki. Of course, 60mm will be somewhere around there. That, that Duvalaki is fantastic for that. So he even says that. <laughs> right. Now, <clears throat> I just wanted to point something out to you. If, um, we'll cut to the image. I'll, we'll cut to the image in a second. Just sitting on the top here is a, a needle that you've got to be very careful of. It's got an O-ring on it, and that can actually come out. Right. Now, if in, you know, Do you need don't, me to bring that Don't realise it might come out and fall down into your forks here. So... Just want to point that out. We'll cut to an image and get Neil to show that. Now, looking at this image here, you can see... Now, this is the old style of measuring your air gap. Ah, uh, yes. Um, see that? He's got a ruler in there, and and you can see the 6, mm -hmm. 60 mil. So he's popping that in, using it like a dipstick. So you can do that. But that's fine on the dampening leg but the fork leg you can't do it because the, the, sorry the spring leg because the springs are in it so that, that's why using the syringe and the hose is a great idea if you just flick back to that image you see where neil's pointing that um arrow to that's the louvre duvalaki i'm talking about that's your needle that's your little needle there now that that needle there adjusts your dampening um when you see on the top of the cap if um if you can see that on this cap now some of the different this particular fork has like a little star and you can turn it and you'll feel it click click the settings go uh, got a little spring loaded clip on them um some of the older ones will just have simply have a, a screwdriver um slot to put a small screwdriver on and you can do your settings now that there pushes that little needle down and that's what adjusts your dampening on your leg. Now, we're not going to go into dampening settings and all that sort of stuff today, but we, we certainly will further down the track. But generally, if you go anti-clockwise until it stops, that means you've got, that's your negative um, dampening. You've got no dampening at all. Um, and then they generally have about 30 clicks, 32 clicks on the paolis until you get on maximum dampening. Now, as a general rule of thumb, I normally set mine around seven. That, that's what I normally have mine on. I like mine bike to be fairly springy. Right. Neil, Neil, Neil's laughing already because he reckons I'm an idiot and don't know No, no, no we're laughing over the rain. Oh, is that what you're laughing about? I thought yeah. you, yeah. If, so, um, there's a gentle pitter-patter at the moment. Yeah, so it's great to be getting some rain, isn't it? Oh God, it's lovely. I'm still yeah. not looking forward to 36 on Sunday for a ride. Oh, well, I reckon that'll be awesome. Be nice and humid. <laughs> weirdo. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so that's um, that's how you set your air gap on your forks. Um, most important to have your um, 
your fork leg fully compressed, your dampening rod fully compressed to set your air gap. No worries. And that's all done? No. Oh, no, what's You thought next? you were going to get a rest. Oh, no, that's right. Oh, well, actually, you'll notice I've now moved it to an angle because my arm is actually getting really, really sore. <laughs> uh, I don't make the best, yeah. I don't make the best vice. Yeah, so you might actually have to move over there because I'm, ah, oh, yes, all right, Neil's oh. moved the mic, so. Thanks, Neil. Hang on. How's how's that going? Now, I just Oh, that's right, you're going to add the orange thing thingamajigger the, onto the it. The thingamajigger. So... Fork, fork seals, if your fork seals are leaking oil, um, then obviously the first thought is to replace your fork um, seal. But um, I just thought I'd point out to you, so you can get a, a, um, a particular fork seal cleaning tool. Um, and this is it, it here. Just take that off. You can buy them. They, they come sitting on a little device like that. This, this is the actual cleaning. You'll notice they've got a, a thin one and a, a slightly thicker one there. So you can use whichever one's appropriate. Generally, I only use the thin one. Now what it's got is it's got like a little a plow thing, really. Just turn it a little more. Um, it's kind of got a little plow and then it runs up and then it's got a little channel running here. So the trick is you clip it onto your fork leg push it down into your seal and then you rotate it like that and it, it scoops out any dirt you might have under your seal. Oh, so it's kind of like a spatula for your mixing bowl. Basically, yeah. Oh, yeah. well, there you go. So simply all you need to do is just bring your um, your wiper seal up out the way. This just clips. Now, you get them in two different sizes. So um, what's this one? I think it's 35... 35 to 45 probably yeah 35 to 45 and then they do another next size up for your enduro bikes and stuff like that but 35 to 45 is what you need for um for a trials bike i don't actually have any in stock at the moment but generally i've got one or two lying around so if you want one shout out no problems um so basically you just clip that on there it's just a snap on like that you just push it down and just rotate it and let it drop down in and cut cut into the seal basically but because of the plastic and it won't and you just rotate it around like that and then pull it back up and if it's got any dirt you'll see the dirt will come up onto here now this one hasn't got any but that's basically how it works now another whoa just there we go well, we'll get we'll that later, later. <laughs> so um Another trick is, and because a lot of the young people won't know, you get a negative film from a camera. Oh, what's that? <laughs> I, I've heard of cameras, but what is this? This yeah, film? Negative, you know, you get the negative film from a camera, and you can slide that in there, and you know the little grooves in in it. You can use that. So there you go. So if you've got negative film lying around, <laughs> and that's for all you dinosaurs out there. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't think you'd be wasting it. You'd be saving it and selling it. <laughs> yeah, you probably will. But um, you, you can if you can improvise and get some thin film of some description. Similar, people used to use negative film. Um, put a couple of slots in it and you can just slide it down there, drag out, clean out your fork. So that's the first thing you do if you've got a fork seal leaking. You clean it out like that. It might just be simply a bit of dirt sitting in there. If it still continues to leak, then unfortunately you're going to have to replace your fork seal, and then that's another story. No worries. So we'll cool. wrap up this story? Yeah, I think we'll wrap up that so you don't have to hang on to that oh, thank anymore. thank God, my arms. No worries. <sighs> so there we go. Um, what's the news, Jess? The news <laughs> is we've got a big shiny new trailer. Oh, yes, we have. We do. And unfortunately, some people got a little bit lost at the trial the other weekend because they were looking for our old van, um, but uh, they couldn't find it because... Neil's going to... Da, 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 da. We have um, yeah. the new trailer. Yeah, so um, I'm sorry for anyone that was looking for the Iveco, what, what everyone usually calls the beta van. Um so um, we've we've upgraded um, the beta van was get, is getting too long in the tooth and and I was a bit concerned about its longevity for for running over over east and nationals and stuff like that 
Um, unfortunately, also we've grown, we've grown out of the beta van. Um, we've um, it, with Jess, myself, Neil, and and Audrey and Charlotte riding. We've got a minimum of five bikes mm. for a start. Um, the other problem we had with the beta van is, is of course, it's, it was only a three seater, and we couldn't. Neil couldn't carry the family to an event. Shh. Don't tell Seb that. <laughs> so we we'll, we asked. We would well, and we are. We still need to up, upgrade the vehicle um, to get something suitable so we can tow the trailer and cart the family and all that sort of stuff. So, so hence I was looking for um, a suitable vehicle and then then a trailer, an enclosed trailer to become the shop. Um, and I spotted this thing. It's a little bit bigger than what I was planning. Um, no, I think I think we'll fit but, in there comfortably with the but, plans that we've got for it and everything. Yeah, so I think yeah. it's sometimes maybe a it's better to be a bit big I, and I you like so. buying stuff so yeah. you know i thought i had a shopping addiction holy dooly <laughs> yeah so um so if you're coming to a trial and you're looking for us don't look for the elveco van look for a black and silver trailer um we'll have the gas gas flags up and our quick shades and, out yep. and um we'll be there but yep. um yeah but it was awesome we did debuted it at the summer series too and it was certainly a lot easier oh. to move even and, to pack up, oh, it was just nicer. Yeah, just was magic. Didn't feel magic. like it was a Tetris game. <laughs> exactly. So, um, bike news. Um, we've got um, Beta Factories late April. Um, we've got a 125 factory for test riding. Nice. So that'll be available. Um, we've got a Gas Gas on the road now, 125 Gas Gas. And a couple of guys had a test ride at it at Summer Series 2. So. Well, I've got to say, I, I jumped on it oh, that's on what you Monday. Did too. I had to go on Simon's bike and a little yeah. zippy for my liking. Yeah, it gets up and goes. Oh, it, it? oh it does. It does. Yeah. I think I still prefer Little yeah. Red. Yeah. <laughs> but she's in bits and pieces. So um, actually, we need to fix her. Yeah, um, yeah. She's actually getting a bit of maintenance at the moment. Yes, I, I see yes, you're doing some work on it the other day. Yes, if I remember correctly, we're doing repacking well, you're them. doing it. Well, yes, I am. Well, I have the help of Neil, um, but we're repacking the muffler, so I'm not going to be as noisy, so I do apologise for everyone. Um, and then there was uh, uh, the head of hype. Something yeah. was going to happen with that. And head stem bearings. There you go. Oh, Whoa. Well, I remembered. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, so that's great. In between weddings and bike prep, you know. Oh, yeah. It's, it's just a, what everyone just, does. Just one of those things. <laughs> Um, we've got we've got a number of TRSs already landed, yes. um, and there's another shipment not very far away, and someone next to me is very excited about that. Well, after riding the gas gas, I'm a bit scared of getting on a TRS and what? it's brand new, and I'm just like, oh my god, it's going to be zippy. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the, the new owner of the Electric Start um, TRS is, is a little bit the same, a bit, mm. bit scared to um, ride and scratch their new bike, but totally I'm, sure, get that. I'm sure it'll be out at, um, at the next trial. So, bubble wrap. Yeah, bubble wrap. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and also the Vertigos have actually docked. Oh, nice. Like, yep, the Vertigos have docked. Um, the actual container we don't expect to be emptied until after Easter, unfortunately. Um, and it should be on a truck heading this way um, next uh, the week after Easter, which is next yep. week, actually, isn't it? Yes, <clears throat> East, no, Easter's this week, so yeah, it should be yep. on next week because yeah. then we've got... Um, yeah, yeah. Trial on the following week as well. Yeah, at Mental Falls. Then yes. we're off to Mental Falls, and um, uh, the other news is um, the national championships, the Australian National Trials Outdoor Championships, uh, second and third of October. Um, now that is going to be a little bit of a problem for West Aussies because our state championships is it's the, the following, week the following before, no the following week, the week week, week after. after. So um, yeah. I believe there's some conversations happening that there is a gap um, that's possible that the states might go back to a different date. Yeah. To allow all the, because normally there's quite a reasonable number of West Aussies mm. head head for the nationals. So. And have they set a location for it? I haven't seen a specific location, but I believe it's near the Ipswich area. Oh, nice. Yeah, I believe so. So, so we'll see how we go there. Um, and. News news about the trailer means Jess is going to yes. bring it out the cuppers next yes. next Cup, trial. Cuppers will be rolling out. I wish it was like for a nice cool morning, but it's going to be a stinker. But yes, you can still come and grab your tea or a coffee for a gold coin donation. And who knows, the Easter Bunny might leave something at the trailer. 
<laughs> so I know, but you know. You, you never know. You no, never know. You never know. Yeah. So awesome. And, and if there is something left by the East Bunny, you want to get in quick because there would be about maybe 10 <laughs> get, kids I, that would just be like, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, excellent. Um, Frank Walling's just put up that they're hoping to move the states, I'm guessing, Frank, to the 19th of September. 19th of September. Yeah. No worries. Yep. Uh, Frank's on the Good yes. on you, Frank. Thank no you worries. for letting us know that, Frank. Thanks for that. No worries. Well, people, I think that's it from me. Um, yes. Is it it from you? It is it from me. Until next week for episode 11. <laughs> 11. Legs 11. So, um... Really look forward. Thanks for being on the show. It's great to have you here. We really enjoy your interaction. We look forward to seeing you at the um, the Gas Gas Easter Fun Day, the mm-hmm. AJS trial up at Thomas Farm. And then off to Twilight, not Twilight, no. it's the Early Bird Series number two yes, at and Mental Falls in 2J yes. at the Austin family. Definitely. And big shout out to the Austins. They always make us welcome up there. Great, great to get up there and stir them up. And Wendy often sometimes makes me a cuppa. <laughs> oh, does she? Oh, lucky you. So that's cool. No worries, people. See you later. Catch you later. Ciao. Oh, you're now saying ciao. Whoa. Yeah, no Bring worries. Italian. Oh, awesome. Good work, Jess.